We begin in Ontario where talks between the Liquor Control Board of Ontario and the union representing its employees have broken down. Stores are set to close across the province at midnight, barring a last minute deal. Now the potential strike would be the first in the provincial Crown Corporation's history. Our Mike Crawley was at the union's update just a short time ago and he now joins us live. So uh, Mike, what did the union have to say? Travis, the union is very much putting this at the feet of Ontario Premier Doug Ford. They say that his government's plan to drastically expand the uh, number of places where you can buy alcohol in Ontario is going to bleed money away from the LCBO and that it uh, threatens these union members' jobs and also threatens the financial security of the province because uh, the liquor store brings in uh, more than uh, $2 billion a year into provincial coffers. Here's what we heard from uh, one of the union leaders. We see the writing on the wall under Ford's plan we could lose thousands, thousands of jobs and millions of dollars in public revenues. We said that to the employer, and you know what they said back? We can't guarantee your future. I, I'm not some union bureaucrat that people might think I am. I'm actually a worker. I work at a store. I've worked there for 27 years. This is my life. This is my job. This is my future. This is our lives. That's what's on the line here. Now, uh, the union says that they've put forward a, a different sort of proposal for the expansion of alcohol sales. And one of the key things that they're talking about here is that uh, they want to keep the sale of what are called ready-to-drink cocktails, those uh, seltzers, things like White Claw. They want to keep that within the LCBO. Under the Ford government's plans, convenience stores, something like 8,000 of them, would be able to sell not only beer and wine, but also those uh, ready-to-drink cocktails. And both the union and the government and said this was a major sticking point in these negotiations. Uh, here's the president of the Ontario Public Sector Employees Union. We're not bargaining with the employer at this table. We're actually, you know, we have a, a, a ghost at the table in the form of the premier, and he has a particular agenda that he's trying to force upon us. We see this as an existential crisis for the LCBO. Do we want to have a public provider of alcohol as we've had for the past hundred years? Or are we just moving into a Wild West private model? Okay, so Mike, has there been any response from the government as of yet? Uh, yeah, Travis, we had a statement from uh, the Minister of Finance saying that they're disappointed in uh, the uh, union's decision to walk away from the talks at this late stage. Uh, the statement goes on to say that they're particularly disappointed that the union's opposed to in their words, giving people in Ontario the choice and the convenience of buying ready-made drinks, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, now, uh, uh, the government is saying that they're willing to have the talks uh, continue if uh, uh, the union comes back. But interestingly, too, Travis, in its statement, the government's advertising all of the other ways uh, that people in Ontario can access alcohol, even if the provincial liquor stores are closed, because there's something like 450 supermarkets where you can buy beer and wine. The beer store will remain open, uh, as well as uh, bars and restaurants still being supplied alcohol during the strike. Okay, so we're at a stalemate here. Uh, Mike, what is the potential fallout from this strike, if it happens? Yeah, well, it, it certainly does seem like it's 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 a going to happen. Uh, the union was already talking about how they're sending out instructions to their members about where they can uh, be picketing uh, tomorrow morning. The the changes that have happened in Ontario in terms of the access to alcohol does mean that, you know, it's not going to be quite a completely dry summer like the union is saying it's going to be because if people do want to buy you know beer and wine at other places, uh, there are all of those other locations, and that you know, in some ways might have an impact on the union's ability to, to uh, come up with a, the kind of negotiation, negotiated settlement that they want to have here. Uh, and it's, it's very much these reforms are, are sort of hanging over uh, the, the, the negotiations right from the start. Uh, we spoke with a uh, professor uh, from uh, Carleton University. Here's what he had to say. One of the dangers is that if the strike goes on for very long, that people get used to going to other places. So that when the strike is over, you know the uh, uh, you know the business doesn't doesn't uh, just flow back to the LCBO automatically. 
Uh, what we're told by LCBO management is that uh, once the strike starts, uh, that they would keep all of the 600 plus LCBO outlets across Ontario closed uh, for as long as two weeks. You know, if the strike uh, ends before then, if they actually get a deal, they would you know reopen the stores. But it would be two weeks before. Uh, management would be able to open a small number of stores, they're talking about 30 stores around the province, just for Friday, Saturdays and Sundays on limited hours. And the union says that kind of a contingency plan, they've never heard of that before uh, in all of the other times when union negotiations have come right down to the, to the brink of a, of a midnight deadline. Okay. Uh, Mike, I know that you will stay on top of this one and we will be in touch with you. That is the CBC's Mike Crawley in downtown Toronto. And just a note, we did reach out to the Ontario Finance Minister, Peter Bethenfalvi, to offer him uh, a chance to talk about this. He declined that request for an interview. We will be speaking coming up with the leader of Ontario's official opposition party, Marat Stiles. That's in just a few moments. All right, back to this side of the pond now. Let's return to our top story. That's uh, talks have broken down between the Liquor Control Board of Ontario and the union representing its employees. Marit Stiles is Ontario's official opposition leader. She joins me now live. Marit, uh, thanks for being here on short notice. Oh, it's great to be here. You can see I'm joining you from my car, but uh, happy to be here. Well, we appreciate you doing this. Uh, so what do you make of the fact that we could be seeing a massive strike, a historic strike, starting tomorrow? Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, respect for workers and ordinary working people should not be a tall order for this government, for any government. But you're right, this will be a historic uh, strike, certainly if it takes place, and it looks like it will. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, that's on the government because uh, this will be the first LCBO strike in the province's history. And it's going to be a dry summer, at least for a little while, it looks like in Ontario. And uh, the government should have been at the table until the wee hours, trying to get a deal that respects workers and ensures that uh, consumer, consumers have access to the LCBO. Uh, a government source uh, told us that, you know, this is partially because the union focused almost exclusively on uh, ready-to-serve drinks. And, and that has been an issue for some time, uh, you know, drinks going into convenience stores. What do you make of this being blamed on, on the premier? Because is, is this not a, just a matter matter of, you know, collective bargaining? Well, look, I mean, certainly there are some changes that seem to be coming here in the province of Ontario. And I think Ontarians uh, do want some, you know, modernized alcohol sales, but not at the expense of, I think, ordinary working people that they know in their communities who work in the LCBO and also at the expense of, of the, the revenue that is generated that supports many of our public services here in the province of Ontario. And so uh, I think the government is miscalculating this. I mean, we're looking at yet another summer of strikes uh, in the Ford government in, in Ford, Ontario. And I think he's really misreading where people are at. A lot of people in Ontario are struggling, and there's a lot of sympathy for those working people who, uh, you know, let's face it, nobody wants a strike. Not the workers at the LCBO, not the people who buy from the LCBO, nobody. Well, let me just read you part of a statement obtained uh, by our Mike Crawley from the finance minister, Peter Bethenfalvy. Uh, he, he says that we are disappointed by OPSU's decision to walk away from the bargaining table. Uh, we are particularly disappointed that OPSU is opposed to giving people in Ontario the choice and convenience of buying ready-made drinks like coolers, seltzers, and grocery stores and convenience stores. Uh, what do you make of that statement and, and the fact that the government basically says here that, that the union doesn't want any choice for Ontarians, they basically want the LCBO to have this monopoly? Well, I, think, I think that's a very misleading statement by the government. Um, you know, first of all, let's not forget that the Ford government just threw at least a quarter of a billion dollars at the beer store to get out of a contract that would have been up in a year anyways, and just so that they can kind of have their way. Uh, I think a lot of people in Ontario, and what I hear as I'm going around the province is that people see through this kind of thing, these maneuvers by the government. Look, I've sat on both sides of a negotiating table uh, when you're up against a deadline and you just keep going. And this government, the fact that they couldn't keep everybody at the table, that's on them. At the end of the day, um, you know, this is really, again, it, it really should not be a 
tall order for the government to just respect workers. And what they're talking about here in the province of Ontario, you know, this modernization, I think a lot of people don't disagree with in general. Mm -hmm. But it is a major shift and will impact a lot of people. And so at very least, they should have shown the respect to those workers uh, of sitting down at the table and discussing and negotiating with them about something that's going to so dramatically impact their lives. And like I said, also, you know, the revenue that the province of Ontario depends on to fund many of our public services. Yeah, just tell me really, really quickly before I let you go how important that revenue is. Well, it's, it's really important, right? I mean, obviously, it funds a lot of our services here. And in Ontario, you know, people all across the province, and this is something I hear increasingly, right? We are seeing a real decline in things like our healthcare services, uh, our schools, the state of our schools, the supports that our kids are getting in schools, uh, so many services. Community mental health and addiction is another one, which I got to tell you is more directly linked to this than almost anything else. And yet here we are. Uh, a lot of people are noticing a big decline, and that is the government reducing, of course, uh, funding to a lot of those public services. But again, you know, you got to have some revenue coming in. And so it's not to say that that's not um, possible and that certainly modernization couldn't include some support for, for revenue right. for those services. But you got to bring those people together. Those are the experts, right? The folks that work in that industry, they deserve a say. And I think that the government, again, at the end of the day, just showing some basic respect for those people who would be so you know, directly impacted is really the least we should expect from the government. All right, Marit Stiles, I appreciate it. Once again, you hopping on at the last minute here. We'll see what happens. There's a couple hours left where they could potentially get back to the negotiating table. That's the leader let's of... Let's hope. Yes, let's hope. Uh, Marit Stiles, she is the leader of Ontario's opposition.